This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. And we go to black, and well, boy, this match yeah. is already in the ring. Oh, track it. <laughs> it's threatening. I don't know about you, but I'm excited that Shaska's finally getting his hands on this ball headed geek. Uh, me too, buddy. You know, fuck Jimmy Valiant. You under come on, help Billy. I don't know that I've ever loved a wrestler as much as I love Shaska. Shaska, you know, uh, and we just, hey, we're, collectors listening to this show. If you've got some Shaska memorabilia, slide please, my DMs. I need some. Yeah, please, man. That'd be great. We can get that hat for back yeah, in the day. Fuck the top hat. Absolutely. Yeah, I want it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we were talking about Paul Orndorff earlier. Uh, Pez was another, uh, legit battery. Yeah. But he was another trainer at the power plant too. In his later years, him and because, Sarge. Yeah. Because he was a. Legit badass. You know, Sarge sent me a note recently, and uh, he may know some Pez Watley memorabilia because he and Pez were be pretty cool. tight. We got about an hour left in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up next, it's going to be uh, the six man tag and then your world championship match. So, what do you think about the card so far? If, if you're a now, you dig it? Man, it's loaded. Yeah. You know, the Denny Brown in hindsight, I might've had a better start to the show than sure. Denny and Mr. Electricity. You know, right. you got two guys who aren't exactly over and they're going to a 15 minute draw. I don't know that I would start that way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I agree with that. Um, you know, the, the way we kind of do things now, I mean, like for instance, this past week we had, uh, the IWGP us title hot start, uh, hot start. And that's the difference between just a TV show and, oh, we already got your money. So this is what we're starting with. <laughs> Jimmy <Valiant. laughs> Paul, Paul Jones, that fucking motherfucker. This is how Jimmy, this is how Jimmy Valiant sold. He would just shake. What do you think about that? The shaking the sh sale, the shaking sale. Oh, it kind of looked goofy to me. Oh, he's sawing away here. He's tucking it back in his trunks. I like that. I like things in wrestling that I haven't seen before. Give you a perfect example. I don't know if you saw it when it happened, but we had a uh, powerhouse Hobbs. On a match, did you see that? It may have been on dark. It may have, I think it was on elevation where he just picked up a guy and slammed him nine straight times. Yeah. That's fucking cool. You don't, it's just something out of the ordinary that you, you just don't, don't see much. And I, and I like that. I like for kids to think of something like that and then coming up with it now. And Pez that time was just doing the head butts as he had him on the floor or on the, on the mat. That was cool. Hey, Jimmy, see Jimmy, that leg shaking, grabbing Tommy and see, uh, or, uh, Hebner see right here. Jimmy can call a spot to Hebner and Hebner can relay it to Pez. If Pez didn't hear what he said. And that's what teamwork's all about in the ring. We, uh, We don't, and I'm going to give, I'm going to give a thumbs up to all the referees who's ever been a referee in a big time wrestling show, especially all of the kids that we've got in uh, AEW right now. I know Aubrey's a friend of mine. We do the AEW unrestricted together and, but all the, uh, referees that we have Paul Turner and Bryce Remsburg and Mike Posey. And, and of course, all the referees that have gone through, uh, WWE, of course, Kyoto's the one we know most of all on ad free shows, but those people, those people do a lot of work. Yeah. They really, really do. And they're instrumental part of the organization and implementation of a match. They really are. They keep everybody up to date on the time. If we're in a commercial break, they are the, they are the absolute first, you know, our referees can now talk to 
to Tony and can now talk. Here's a cover. Can now talk to the doc. And they are the first line if someone is really injured. So they, they, uh, they have a, uh, they have a very important job and they do it well, I think. And I, I'm sure that the same thing could be said, the WWE officials and NXT officials. And then there's Doug Markham. Yeah. He's a nothing happening motherfucker. Yeah, he is. As yes, we sir. well know. Yeah. How about this? If your friends are Cassio kid, you yep. suspect at best. Yeah. Ex- oh, exactly. Exactly. I want to mention this is, uh, as we said, July 5th, the next day you guys did a matinee show in Asheville, uh, and the uh, main event was flair and Ricky Morton in a Texas death match. We also would see the road warriors wrestle Arn and Tully to a double DQ. Then we got, uh, the night show, which is the Dorton arena. It's a TV taping the following day. Again, two shows, one in Greenville, South Carolina, one in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. On the eighth, you were doing TV in Spartanburg, South Carolina. On the ninth, you did another bass show. Cincinnati, Ohio, Riverfront Stadium, George Jones. He's gonna mm. be there in concert. On the tenth, you're at the Civic Center in Charleston, West Virginia. You got Waylon Jennings and Jesse Coulter on deck with Flair defending against Ricky Morton. On the eleventh, also David Allen Coe in concert, Roanoke at the Civic Center, once again with Flair and Ricky in a steel cage match. And then in Jacksonville on the twelfth, you're at the Gator Bowl. Mm. Got ten thousand fans there for that one. Mm. It's gonna be Waylon and Jesse Coulter. It's just a remarkable, just day after day. The thirteenth, you're in San Antonio. Mm. And then you have a night show, and it's uh it's a stadium show. It's a match that was held during a Cleveland Indians game. How about that? Wow. On the 14th, Wilmington, North Carolina on the 15th limestone college TV taping and TV tape. mm-hmm. uh, the 17th here in, uh, or, or flair was defending his title in Kansas city. Then you're doing ta- TV on the 17th as well. Back at the Coliseum in Richmond for another bash show with David Allen Coe on the 18th, Baltimore on the 19th, Greenville on the 20th, Fayetteville on the 21st with a concert from uh, David Allen Coe. 22nd, you're doing TV. 23rd, you're at Freedom Hall, this time with David Allen Coe. The Norfolk Scope on the 25th. It's remarkable when you think about this. I mean, we're still going. Yeah. Of course, the 26th is the Greensboro show, which we're going to talk about. TV taping the very next day in Atlanta and then two shows, one as a debut for Jim Crockett promotions at the reunion arena in Dallas Wow! and a show at the Asheville civic center. And then, uh, a Wilmington, North Carolina show on the 28th rock Hill for TV on the 29th on the 30th. So the end of this month, baby doll and Sam Houston would get married in Lubbock, Texas. And that same day, you guys are wrestling in Dorton arena 31st. You're in Columbia. And then, uh, you're going to start August off in San Antonio, a TV taping. And then of course the Fulton County bash was the second, then one more TV taping on the third. And then finally a few days of fucking well-deserved rest. Wow. What a month. Wow. What a run. <sighs> I'm tired. Just reading it. Yeah, man. I just, uh, just working the guys to death is basically what you're doing, but you know, this is what you got into it for, right? Most of them knew and what they were in, in for and boy, Jimmy Vine's taking an ass kicking here, man. Big time. Shot I'm glad too, Cause he's a fucking ball headed geek and everybody knows <laughs> it. Look at, I get it. It's a wrestling podcast, but he's saving us money on our mortgage. Do you really trust this process? The reviews don't lie. Five-star review after five-star review. We make it fast. We make it easy and it's no cost or obligation. Give us a shot to earn your business. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did, especially if you like keeping more of your own money. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. So what are you waiting for? Hurry to save with Conrad.com. him dancing dude 
I bet that's the way you used to do before you jumped in there with Lois. Mm, no. Oh, wow. He's valianting up. Mm-hmm. Let me give you a little pro tip. If anybody in your life ever thinks wrestling is real, show them a Jimmy Valiant match. <laughs> That'll end the debate. <laughs> well, uh, there could have been a debate back in 86, but I don't think much, much now. This is it, man. Oh, here comes the Baron. But we're not done. I'll be a little help from our friends. Oh, he's putting the glove on that dirty damn. Uh, here comes the bull. But if it's got some tape on his head, just fell on him. <laughs> By the way, we're not done. There's even more coming. Oh, Boogie's putting the black glove on. And everybody knows if you put a black glove on, your your hand becomes a Hulk hand. We well, notice how Give me a referee. There it is. By the way, referee or Hebner was about 17 yards away when he came <laughs> to the bend. <laughs> now he's making the motion for getting the old head shaved. And here comes Sam Houston. I just figured out something here. There's Nelson Royal. There's Ronnie Garvin. There's Robert Gibson. All the baby faces are here and boy, in hindsight, this probably doesn't look that great. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we have seven middle-aged white guys hold down the black guy and skin his head right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> I don't know in hindsight if that's such a good look. <laughs> Jesus. I'm with you. <laughs> and look, every one of those motherfuckers has the big bandages on their head. Uh -huh. Man, he got some good shears because it, that air is coming right off. Wow. Now he looks like Mr. T. Well, he didn't have the gold chains. Yeah, but he's got that. That was Mr. T's hairstyle. I, I right pity there. the fool that has to let <laughs> Jim Valiant shave their fucking head. Let me see. Did you realize it, all of a sudden it hit me? Do you think Jimmy Valiant had a impact on Hulk Hogan? 100%. Because when he grabbed that glove. Dude, everything he, he was. Hogan, Hogan mimicked and mocked everything superstar and, uh, Jimmy Valiant and dusty Rhodes. If you put dusty Rhodes and boogie woogie and, uh, and superstar in a blender and turned it on when you pour it out in a glass, it's red and yellow brother. And, and this one just hit me years and years and years later when I first met Hogan. And I was working the WWF. He called me Shivanto, which is what Valiant would call me. Absolutely. How about that? And then when I saw Valiant put that glove on and shake his head to the fans, you know, not that's the way Hogan used to do, right? Dude, the whole hulking up thing. Yeah. Valiant just did it. Wow. It was so over the top cartoonish, but it worked. Yeah. By the way, he, he's dressed like the goddamn Hamburglar today. <laughs> Wow. How about that? Jimmy Valiant had an impact. I, I, I didn't get it until right now. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is change brother with daddy and even yeah. promos are the same, right? It's unfortunate that Shaska is now a ball headed geek. Yeah. But the good news is, is when Shaska gets up and, and realizes it, go try to stick the hair back on his head, which oh, is always hilarious. Thanks for the spoiler. <laughs> well, come on. Let's track it. He went from looking like Shaska to Mr. T and now like Mark Henry.
<laughs> Dude, what a what a performance artist he is. Yes. To have the wherewithal to not only have a great performance, but he realizes the payoff is in the post match response. Uh huh. So him discovering he's bald and then trying to put the hair back on his head. Yeah. Hilarious stuff. Yeah. I think he looks more like a badass now that he's bald too. Oh yeah. And you know what the, the great thing about, uh, not the great thing, but the, uh, I don't know, just uh, something to bring up here is the fact that there was no one in that arena at that time that thought that thought there was too many white men on a black guy. Yeah. It never, it was, it, it never, no, never came up in their mind because to them, it was a wrestling angle. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.